work. It was springtime in the forest. The sun shined brightly, and there was not a single cloud in the sky. Rosie the rabbit and her friends decided to have a picnic to celebrate that the Rochester rain was over. They were deciding who to invite. I don't care who we invite as long as we don't invite Fox. Yeah, you, we should have a picnic at your meadow. It's beautiful. We should turn it to Fox's house. That is so. We're inviting everyone except Fox and Jonah, because that's it. The next day, they set up the picnic. Everything was done. The place were aligned, the napkins were folded, and the place cars were set. I was missing something. What could it be? Flowers! Of course, I can't believe we forgot the flowers. All the animals left the picnic to go get the flowers. While they were gone, a fox was walking by and saw the nice picnic. Fox can go to the picnic? No one can. Fox gathered up all the food, the blanket, and the place, leaving nothing but the place cards. He crept away gingerly and went home. Rosie, Bertie, and Daniel came back to see with the most beautiful bouquet of flowers. <gasps> what happened to the picnic? Guys, not doing it worse, but people coming any minute. It must have been Fox who took all of our picnic things. I can fix it, I'll be right back. stands up and walks over to Rosie and says, Thank you. You're welcome, Fox. After the picnic, Fox started being kinder to all of the animals. Now Fox get invited to all of the picnics and is friends with all of the animals. And the moral of the story is, sometimes you should give others a second chance. <laughs> It was a scorching afternoon in the peaceful jungle, and Ellie Elfin was drinking the ice-cold water from the drinking pond to try to cool herself off. Just then, Pretty Peacock swished in and started drinking, too. Uh, you are so ugly, Ellie Elephant. I bet that if you were as beautiful as me, you would have to hide all the time. This was not true. Ellie Elephant was a shy thing and got nervous easily. This is why she hid so often. Just then, Pretty Peacock found Stin just returning from the spot. Beautiful and all the jungle, and you with your big feet and long and hanging out all to the ground are the ugliest. It's called the trunk. Ellie Elephant was so hurt, so when she went home, she whined about it to her parents. Mom, Pretty Peacock is always teasing me about my looks, but I'm just trying to be kind and thoughtful. You are kind and thoughtful, but Pretty Peacock may not be. Besides, do you remember when you were young? No. When you were younger, Pretty Peacock and me and you used to be the best of friends. Once when she came over to our house, we took her swimming in the outskirts of the jungle. She kept although Peacock's although elephants had water, Peacock did not. Pretty Peacock could not swim, so he jumped in the water and saved her. Really? Yes, really. The next day at the water hole, Pretty Peacock skipped up to Ellie Elephant. I see that you're just as ugly as you were yesterday. Stop! Fine! Well, I challenge you to a beauty contest. What do I do? What is a beauty contest? I know. Ask Beauty Beaver. Later that night, the beauty contest was held. Pretty Peacock came dressed in fancy clothing and wearing vibrant makeup. Ellie Elephant came as herself. You will never win. The contest was beginning. Pretty Peacock pranced around and sho showing off, and Ellie Elephant tried to do the same.
Sweet Home, written by Christopher Kilbridge. It was a nice summer day and Baby Bunny was bored. He wanted to travel outside of his burrow and explore. His mother, Mama Bunny, who was very overprotective, had always warned him that traveling too far from home was not smart because she said there were many dangerous creatures. Mama, I want to go out and explore! I told you, you're not allowed to leave the burrow until you're older. But Mama! No but. Baby Bunny didn't like the fact that his mama still treated him like a baby. He felt he was brave enough and strong enough to leave their burrow. <laughs> that night, Baby Bunny snuck out of the burrow. Unbeknownst to him, a snake was on the prowl. Man, I probably shouldn't have come all the way out here. I'm really far from home. Baby Bunny looks around and can't find his way out of the tall grass. Ah! Baby Bunny is right in front of a long, scaly beast with a forked tongue. What are you? I'm a snake. What's a snake? I need my mama. She's an adult. I am a Oh, gosh! Baby Bunny ran home and hid under his bed, holding his teddy bear until morning. <laughs> Mama, I don't want to go out anymore. You went out? Yeah, but I'll never do it again until I'm older. I promise. <laughs> and the moral of the story is those who act without sufficient thought will often fall into unsuspected danger. Killer Curiosity by Arjun Patel One windy spring day on the top of a hill there was a quaint little farm. A curious little chicken was going for a stroll after she had finished all her chores in the hen house. What a nice day it is for a walk. Suddenly she smelled an odd but interesting smell coming from afar. What is that odd smell? I wonder where it comes from and what it is. So Chicken went to investigate the scent, and on her way she found an owl perched on the log by the side of the street. Chicken walked over to greet him by saying, Why, hello, owl. Do you smell that strange smell? I am searching for a source. I'm not sure, but I'll spit your smells in as you are now. And I got much trouble. I'm warning you to have precautions. But you have to kill so Chicken continued her walk to find the curious smell. She ventured very far from home, and soon she found a poorly made but very large and very tall house by the side of a stream. Anyone home? Come in! Little did Chicken know that this was Lion's house, and she had never met a lion before. Do you smell that strange smell? Oh, that is just my dinner. Would you like some? Of course. I would be delighted. As Chicken and Lion walked up the stairs to Lion's dining room, Chicken started to get tired from all the big steps. The steps were made for Lion's huge feet, so Tr Chicken had trouble making it up the stairs. As they reached the top, Chicken collapsed, winded from being so tired. This was all part of Lion's plan. Oh, why don't you lay down on this nice glass plate? I mean, bed. Thank you, sir. I am quite tired. Chicken fell sound asleep, and Lion ended up having chicken nuggets for dinner. <laughs> and the moral of the story is, don't let curiosity take advantage of you. <laughs> One spring morning at Coco Crisp Charter School, Teacher Cat was assigned the science fair partners. Each pair needed to work together. The bell rang. <laughs> Mouse and Mean Rat were the last two to enter, then class began. No, I will be assigning science fair partners. Mouse was so scared that the teacher would put him with Rat, because all year Rat had called him to leave and broke his pencils. The teacher began announcing pairs. I would like Mouse and Rat to be partners. Oh no, I knew this would happen. Perfect, Mary Mouse. I can sit back and do all the work. It was the next day in time to work on their science fair. 
I would like Mouse and Rat to go out in the hall. Also, Fox and Snake. When Rat and Mouse went into the hall, Mouse, Rat sees his best friends, Fox and Snake, and decides to hang out with them and play with their fidget spinners instead of helping Mouse with the project. So Mouse decides to talk to the science teacher. Um, teacher, can I work alone? Well, why, honey? Mouse walks away and begins working alone. Rat realizes he is going to get a bad grade if Mouse doesn't put his name on the project. Hey, Nanny Mouse, can I look to see if you stop calling me names and do a little work? Deal. Mouse and Rat started working together. Rat wrote all the answers and even learned a little science. Thank you, my Rat. Nice job. Thank you. Okay. And the moral of the story is, when we're working together, we can less alone. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We hope you enjoyed the show. Enjoy the rest of your day.